there. David Taubman again. Uh, seemed like it was just uh, a couple hours ago I did uh, the video there in Quartzsite. And sure enough, I'm uh, still working my way home uh, on this Labor Day back from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I'm now in California. I'm in Hayfield, California, which is uh, about 40 miles west of Blythe. Uh, so I was just in Quartzsite. Now I'm in California, still making my way home uh, along the I-10. But as I drive that I-10, I, I pass this amazing water structure. Uh, it's known as the Hayfield Pumping Station or actually uh, more recently named the uh, Julian Hines Pumping Station. It's all part of the Colorado River Aqueduct that's currently managed by the Metropolitan Water District of uh, Southern California. And, and this, uh, that Colorado River Aqueduct system is, is an amazing uh, engineering feat, if you will. It was uh, thought of back in the 1920s when they kind of created the uh, predecessor to Metropolitan Water District. Created the district, uh, the federal government got involved, created the Parker Dam back in the 1920s, and the Colorado River Aqueduct uh, was a eight-year project, uh, employed over 30,000 people, as much as uh, 10,000 at one time. But I'll just read some of the numbers here. So it's a 242 mile system, has two reservoirs, five pumping stations, 63 miles of canals, 92 miles of tunnels, and 84 miles of conduits and siphons that are buried underground. Uh, so again, just an amazing feat. Eight years, uh, the water started flowing in 1939. And the bond that was taken out back in 1931 was $220 million. Uh, if you do the math uh, today, that's roughly 3.5 billion. That's a billion with a B. And that just blows my mind. When I was uh, the asset manager at Colorado Springs Utilities, we had a major water project called the Southern Delivery System. And that was a, a 60 mile system from uh, the Pueblo Reservoir up to Colorado Springs. And we had reservoirs and pumping stations, but you know that was roughly 1.2 billion. And through value engineering and using uh, various engineering principles and technologies, also including GIS, we brought it down to under a billion. And you know that it, it, the price tag covered right around there as we start building out the project and uh, it's uh, still uh, piece parts are being done, uh, built today but uh, you know 1 billion versus 3.5 billion again I just I can't imagine you know that that the task of, of getting that approved and that's one of the things we're going to be looking at at Esri is you know how um, how GIS geospatial technology can help funding issues uh, from from uh, justification of capital projects to revenue to rate structures and uh, so look forward to to that coming out there um, again this is David Topman uh, standing out in the middle of the desert here in California must must love what I do it's uh, uh, even though it's cloud cover, it said 108 degrees on my dashboard there uh, when I was getting out of the truck. So uh, anyway, uh, you have any questions, you can uh, send an email to me at dtopman at esri.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Esri Water Guy. And of course, our monthly meetups for more information, uh, meetup.com slash Esri dash water dash meetup. So, Again, uh, looking forward to uh, these videos and uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.